it's Gordon Berry from Armadillo here. You're in the right place. Getting and keeping key people for your accountancy firm has been a real challenge for the industry over the last few years. Hiring the right people, getting them in the right seats, getting them doing the right work for them, for you, for the client, so that they can do the best work that they're able to do. And then holding on to them. All of this has been a challenge. This, this includes finding the right candidate, making them the right offer, onboarding them, giving them the right work to suit their personality and style, and then developing them as people by giving them training in more than just the technical aspects of accountancy. We at Armadillo have been focusing on these aspects and we're about to roll out some additional benefits for members that we believe will be really helpful. For today, I'd like to just have a look at the importance of understanding personality and styles of our individual team members and how that can actually help us. So if you bear with me, I'm going to do a short 15 minute video. And I want to talk first of all about personality profiling. There's a number of useful tools for personality profiling, including DISC and including Myers-Briggs and a few others. What I'd like to do is offer just a little bit of understanding of DISC analysis so we can see why it might be of interest. The original theory of this, which comes from people like Carl Jung, effectively puts us into four quadrants. Now, we have a bit of each, as you'll, as you'll see shortly, but we tend to have certain styles that fit into these four quadrants. Along the top here, we've got dominant and influence, which tend to be more extrovert styles. Along the bottom, compliance and steady tend to be more introvert styles. To the left, dominant and compliance are all about facts. To the right, influence and steady are all about people. So the dominance factor tends to measure how you handle problems and challenges. So someone that's a high D, see if you can recognize this sort of person. Someone that's a high D tends to be very active and potentially aggressive in getting results. They're quite dominant in their personality. They are extrovert, but they're all about the facts. Just give me the facts. I don't need a story or I've told you once, I shouldn't have to tell you again. Or I don't need all that detail to go with it. Just give me the big picture. Let's get on with it. That's high D personality. They go directly at the problem with little or no fear. Usually rely on gut instinct. Don't spend an awful lot of time in the detail. Someone who's low D tends to approach a problem with a more calculated, organised and well thought out plan and tends to avoid conflict. A high D person is results orientated, desire to win, high risk taker, may be argumentative, is quick to challenge. So clearly there's potentially issues with that because some people might perceive that as in your face, rude, aggressive, at its extreme, cold, hard and uncaring. A high D person might feel alone and misunderstood but will drive on regardless. Often there's a lack of patience with others. The primary fear of a high D person is being taken advantage of. That sound familiar? Anybody you know? High I person, high influence, again is extrovert, but it's more about people. So a high I person that shows enthusiasm, is optimistic, likes to collaborate, tends to have a lot of friends, social butterfly, 
life and soul of the party. High I, the influencing factor that measures how you interact with people. So very outgoing and social, persuasive verbally, tends to trust others and be very optimistic. A low I person tends to be more sincere and reserved, approaches situations and relationships cautiously. A person who has a high I style is creative problem solver, enthusiastic, uses humour, fun loving, impulsive, great networker, has never met a stranger. Potential issues with that, they can come across as a bit flaky, never get anything done or finish anything, little substance behind what they're doing, lack of attention to detail. The primary fear of a high eye is social rejection or not being liked. High S, steadiness, those people tend to approach things in a calm manner. Their actions tend to be supportive and accommodating, fairly humble. Steadiness factor measures how you handle things at steady pace and how you handle change. High S tend to prefer a more structured, predictable environment. They prefer having things clearly defined. They're looking for security. A low S person tends to prefer an unstructured, less defined environment. Prefers to have a great deal of freedom to operate. So the high S style person requires closure or completeness. Needs security. Is a good listener. Can't stabilises others, is a good planner. Tends to have more patience than other styles. Issues with that? Might come across to a high D or a high I person as frustratingly slow. Takes too much to think, time to think about how they feel about something instead of just getting on with it. They appear too reserved to a high I person. So they need structure and a gentle approach. The primary fear of high S is loss of stability and security or confrontation. High C person, compliance, I'm afraid is the stereotypical accountant. They like facts, they like system, they like processes. So the compliance factor tends to measure how you respond to the rules and procedures set by others. So they tend to follow rules. They enjoy their own space and objective reasoning. They want the detail and fear of being wrong. So they follow the rules. They're aware of the effects of failing to comply with the rules. They tend to be extremely cautious. For them it's introvert and fact. A low C person is the complete opposite, tends to do it their own way, pushes the envelope, establishes their own rules. That would be more a high D person. So you can see the conflict there potentially between different factors. A high C person tends to work well alone. In fact, they probably prefer being alone. They do tend to have high expectations of themselves and others but they're able to solve complex problems by approaching it in a systematic, organised way. The challenge is they can overanalyse everything, maybe overcritical with themselves and others, not particularly outgoing or sociable. In dealing with clients, of course, the very high C person is the one that wants to stay through the back working with the spreadsheet rather than meeting with the clients or in meeting with the clients omits the small talk and wants to drive straight into the work and yet the small talk could be so key in building the relationship with the clients. I hope that helps give you a little bit of a picture of these different factors that go to create our personality. 
you can see potentially, I would hope, how different people, how this relates to different people that you know and have met different people in the organisation. Clearly, a high I person is not the one to be put in a room on their own with a spreadsheet to the high C person. Clearly, for somebody to run and drive a business, there has to be a little bit of D and I extrovert, even if the natural tendency tends to be introvert, and you have to find a way to balance that. So a little bit of understanding of these traits tends to help us to understand other people be that clients, be that colleagues, be that friends. So if we are working with a new client, being able to tell where they fit in a disc profile helps us know how to communicate with them. Because people like people like themselves. And in order to build that initial rapport, if you can understand where that other person is coming from, it helps to build that rapport and that relationship. And similarly between colleagues, conflicts in the office are generally conflicts between people not understanding each other's styles. Most people leave businesses not because they don't like the work. It's usually personality conflicts that cause the issue.